All right, so I have a few things written down, but uh, only for game one and two. For now, I'll just uh, do the rest in video, just for convenience. All right, so okay, so the first thing I noticed is just matchup related. It's just knowledge you didn't have, so uh, I'll make you aware of it now. But um, for a lot of the video, it looks like you're gonna be uh, definitely um, doing some research on uh, ultimateframeData.com. So a really good website tells you everything about um, frame data on your character and on any character, which is which any information on a character is really useful. I do suggest watching a video on it because um, I can't exactly explain the importance of it that well, but it it does come into play a lot. Um, with understanding what you can do in situations. Um, definitely watch a video on frame data for Smash. It's actually really important for long-term purposes. All right. Um, oh, but before I start that, um, keep in mind you can always get a feeling for something that's unsafe on shield, but like ultimate frame data allows you to get that knowledge beforehand. Like you don't have to feel it. You just, they just tell you the information and you'll know it going into the match. Okay, so let's actually start. Um, let me put the volume up a little bit. Okay, so um, here, first thing I noticed. Uh, no, please. That Nair he did right there, uh, Nair 1. Uh, did you respond to it differently? Right? Uh, yeah, you tried to grab it, right? That's that's what happened. Alright, so, um, this is a negative 4 frame move. Your grab is, uh, frame 9. So, uh, your, your actual grab box doesn't come out until frame 9. And his move, um, he's already actionable, um, 5 frames earlier before your grab even starts to come out. So, that means his nair is safe on shield. And... Not even up B can catch it because if B guesses you're gonna up B, he can roll away. But after all, it's all a guessing game, so you won't really know for sure. But um, yeah, just keep in mind that his first hit of Nair and second hit of Nair, if landed properly, is uh, safe on shield and you cannot grab it. He can jump before you can even grab. It. Um, you are negative five on grab so that means he's already five frames in advantage when he does near on your shield okay, uh, fine nothing happened okay uh, i don't think there was anything significant we just lost like a neutral exchange you trying to up in there i don't know uh, that down air was a very risky. Um, down air is a very laggy move, especially if you don't full hop it. And if it did miss, you probably would have gone grab and then air comboed. So just be careful. Uh, let me see that situation again. I'm not sure what other option you could use. Instead. Air dodge. No, you can't help me there. F tilt misses. Okay, so you beat his short hop by full hopping, which is really Uh this was no reaction right there. Uh don't worry about it for right now. it's really just experience. The more you play against Falcon, the more you're gonna be able to react to his options a lot faster. So it's just experience. So don't worry about it. You could have fared him, but like you didn't have enough experience to know that. So it's not your fault, it's just well I mean it is, but like, it, it's not that important right now. You got this high B anyway, so it doesn't matter. Uh, there, you could have walked forward a little bit and see what he did in response. Uh, he seemed to tech or attack roll away in response to uh, tech situation, so you want to keep that in mind for next time whenever you do send, uh, cross slash or send them into the ground somehow. He might tech roll away. So nothing can bring punish. Let's go to this. Another one. Uh, 
this you need to work on a lot. Um, seeing that you're, uh, what do you call it, doing a lot of um, unfinished back airs and forward airs. Like you're going to be going in the air like really high and then you do it too early. And I'm pretty sure you meant to do like a short hop back air. It still wouldn't have hit because short hop back air goes too far up for the back air to actually hit if you do it instantly. So what you can do is a uh, short hop first, wait just a tiny bit, back air, and fast fall. Or no, fast fall and then back air immediately. That's how you create back air pressure with the character. You can apply this to full hop as well. Uh, but really, um, what I want you to do is uh, practice your fast falling. Practice fast falling all your aerials are going to be really important. They need to be second nature if you want to win matches. is 23 seconds in it. Oh, right, I missed on something important. So I was busy commenting on something else. Let's see. Okay, this. If you see a person dash dancing for this long, just dash attack them. They are not going to target you with anything. Especially Falcon, because he has one of the worst dashes in the game. Like, before he even turns around, there's an extra frame of delay. So he actually just has, like, the worst dash in the game. So if you see him dash dancing like this one, with no meaning at all, just dash attack him. He's not gonna do it down. What's this situation? Okay. So you got an error, you avoided it. Don't try to go for an edge guard right here. Uh, more than likely, when someone misses an attack, they're going to immediately recover out of panic at lower levels. Uh, at high level, they're not gonna do that most of the time. They're probably gonna wait before they even do it which is something you can guess later on uh, once you actually start going to that area. And, uh, yeah. In these situations, don't try to edge guard, just go for stage. All you, all you would you could have done instead is yes. And uh, you definitely need to um, attack those. Like, that's an easy attack. Uh, don't worry about it for now. It's uh, something more experience-based, but attacking this is important. Uh, it allows you to actually just get like a free hit on the Falcon. Um, maybe not so much for Cloud, because risking attacking with Cloud in that area might just get you killed. But it, I heard, I remember you used Paltana, right? So you could probably jump Nair and then just like, or jump Fair and upbeat. Either one. Okay, this was a guess. I don't know. Stage, but either way, it's still legit. Got him stage. Um, in this situation, you can pressure him more while he's off stage, actually. Uh, and if you can pressure someone when he's off stage, uh, they're more likely to make a panic option after they get to ledge, which is what you want to look out for. So, in this situation, while I think what you did here and you handled it really well, I think you did really good in this situation. You knocked him off stage, you went back to stage, you started charging your wind condition, which is your limit. Really good shit right here. You're giving a lot of pressure just by charging limit. You're letting him know that if he makes one wrong mistake, he's going to get limit cross slashed. But um, what you could have done to add extra pressure is uh, go off stage while he's like... Uh, you know, right here in this moment, you could have dashed off. And if my mouse is here... You could have dashed off, uh, did a double jump rising uh, down air, and try to catch his uh, upbeat with the down air. This will make him feel like, oh shit, he's trying to edge guard me safely, and if he gets a hit, I'll die. And then they're going to start panicking, and then he's probably going to use like, a get up attack or a roll, whatever his uh, usual um, uh, habit is on ledge whenever he's pressured. <laughs> This is a really good call out. A lot of Falcons definitely love to use burst options in that corner. It's something you'll catch on to a lot more. I don't agree with that. Just because you could have grabbed instead and put him in a much worse situation. Or maybe even 
up smash and put him in a juggle situation. And even if you don't know how to juggle yet, it's really good to just put them in the air and try to figure out how to juggle because the experience is definitely worth it. Still, this is good. Still solid. Don't ever do this. Um, you're at range for a get up attack immediately, I can tell. It's not worth it. Don't, don't up smash. If you, if you feel like you have a read, that's fine, but use a much safer tool like F tilt. If you F tilt, and they get up attack, you have just enough time to shield, and you can up the them for get up attacking. The other thing you could do is uh, do a reverse aerial rush back air, uh, fastball back air, to the ledge, and then shield. This will condition them to think, okay, I can attack them, uh, because they're doing an aerial at ledge, so I can, that clearly means I can attack them. But that uh, surprise, your back air is really fast, and then you shield, and then they attack it, and then they get attacked with your up B. So you see how conditioning is really strong here. So you got, you got get up tag, I beat you down. Uh, you probably could have ran in there for a grab, because a lot of people when they uh, see you have limit and they have to attack, they're gonna shield. I don't agree with that. Um, I know you were trying to call a, a double jump, but like what's more consistent is to go off stage and uh, go off stage and pressure them. Just like don't even attack them, just go off stage. And then they're going to be like, oh shit, he's going to edge guard me. So then they're going to use the defensive option. And you're going to keep that in mind for later. So the next time they're in the situation, you can punish the defensive option instead of where they are. Uh, that was... That was a really weird back air, but like, it hit, so... Whatever. <laughs> GG's <man. laughs> Alright, apparently here there's something... Two. Ah, I think it's the situation right here. It's just a you got hit by back twice, right? Yeah, okay. So uh, you got greedy with that down here. First of all, any ledge like that from uh, the corner is not good. Um, if they begin to be in the air, they're probably gonna have a much faster option than you. What you could have done instead. Uh, you could roll into him, so you could just walk a little bit and then roll. Or you could just uh, jump neutral air through him, which is uh, something not a lot of people actually use at higher levels. Which is a little interesting, because it's actually not that good. But anyway. Um, you can also dash back side B to see if, uh, yeah, uh, see if you can guess if he's going to jump approach or not. So really it's just uh, stuff out, uh, an approach. But uh, you also have uh, down tilt. All you have to do is walk a little bit forward and then down tilt in his range. So let me see if I can get back. I just really... yeah, that's right here, right? Okay. He's gonna dash back. Oh wait, no, he didn't dash back. I'm stupid. So he immediately jumped. Okay, so that was actually a little tricky situation. But even then, I'm pretty sure Okay, yeah, yeah, this still can be applied. So yeah, it's, instead of just like doing an, uh, an aerial like that, just you could either wait a little bit or just let go of shield and start walking a little bit and shield and reaction. Because um, walking just gives you access to like literally every single option you have as a character. That's why you want to walk a lot more, uh, because if you run, the thing is, um, your dash animation, uh, depending on the character, can be like 10 frames of lag, or 13, and it's not necessarily bad, but like you don't have options to your tilts, you don't have, um, you don't have options to your specials, you don't have options to really anything except for like jump before you even start going into your run animation when where you start getting more options. This is why when you walk, it's a lot faster. And then you also have just every option you have. Like, if you think they're gonna jump, when you're walking, you can just side B. But if you're dashing and, and you think they're gonna jump, you can't do anything. You're probably just gonna get back here. So I'm not saying get rid of dashing, because that's still a really good option in a lot of situations. But walking is just a careful way of 
trying to get out of situations or a careful way to try to approach. So um, definitely try to implement walking. It's really strong. And it's also character dependent too. Like Marth has the best walking, so he probably does extremely well with walking. He's a, he was actually one of the like the best walkers in Smash Four, because um, not only was he, he like really good, but then he also had jab that comboed into his S match for some freaking reason. But yeah. So you died because of that. him all the space in the world. Well, to be fair, he did do a side B, which is really committable, but, or committal, but um, still, you gave him way too much space. You could have uh, instead did a dash back turnaround shield, and that would have been a much better option. Or just walked away slowly and then shielded to see what he does. Uh, yeah, definitely, definitely go into training mode and work on those timings. It's going to be really important. And do it in like different ways. Don't just like only go run in forward air. Do like a dash away, dash in forward air. Do like a dash away, jump, dash in forward air. You know, like try to make it feel different. Make it make you feel uncomfortable is what you want to do. Do things that make you feel uncomfortable so you can get that down attack. Uh, you could have upper instead. Upper or up tilt combos into upper that percentage. In an early percent it won't combo into up air, but it probably combos into nair, I believe. But uh, around that percentage, which is something you don't know yet because you haven't really tried to combo with the character. And to be fair, this character isn't really a combo character. He's more like, I'm going to hit you hard once, and then you're going to be in a really bad position. He had a really good read on your roll habit, but uh, unfortunately he mistimed it. Could have grabbed them and back through him though, so he can start an edge guard situation. But either way, it doesn't matter. If you didn't chase, you got a You didn't chase afterwards, but like, if you chased earlier, you would have a lot more pressure on him. Uh, personally, I would have backed there because it's a lot less laggier, but. You shouldn't be able to find it. I thought you had enough frames to shield. Did you not shield me? Or were you trying to dash away? Oh, you were S smashing. That's why. I was like, yeah, he shouldn't have had enough frames to shield there. That. I don't know why Falcons do that. I mean, it covers a lot of options, to be fair, but like when they do it early, it's just it's meaningless. It's just, it just makes no sense. Uh, let me see if my voice is better over here. Oh uh, yeah, you can hear me a lot better over here. Actually, that was a really risky forward air. You gotta space those boys. That should have not worked. You, you should have gotten grabbed for that. That's that shit was great. I like that a lot. And you can do that all the time on the jab as well. Because like jab always sets up for um, tech chase situations. It's so good. should have never held in, like, what? What are you trying to accomplish doing that? But, uh, oh well. He died. That's all that matters. Alright, so there's probably going to be a few things that are brand new to game 2, actually. Believe it or not. Alright, here we go. Uh, what's, uh, what's the first thing that, uh, basically... <laughs> Thank you. 
play. Oh, this is a game to know what. Game one, game two. Oh, there we go. Wait. Oh, that's not what I was watching. I was watching this one. Oh, that makes a lot more sense. Okay, so this is actually game three information. That confused me so hard. That's fine. Game two. All right. And here you see Cloud in the directional habitat with Malika doing the mating dance. Anyway, I'm gonna fight you for every freaking nair you do like that. <laughs> it's just so dangerous. I see you're the type of person to live life dangerously, huh? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay, got you in there. Ooh, that was a really good F tilt. If you didn't waste your double jump, let me check. Let me check. Did you span double jump there? I know there's one way to find out if you span double jump. I don't think you did. No, you didn't. Okay, okay, okay. You know how you can tell? You know how you can tell? When you jump, there's a circle that appears beneath your opponent, or your character, and that little circle thing, like these two circles in the corner right here, in the bottom right corner, these two little circles indicate you use the double jump. A top layer will actually just look to see if you shook a little higher than normal, or if you used a double jump by looking at those circles. And then they're gonna know how to pre pressure you properly. <laughs> Okay, Popkins just rushing in for no reason. You could back in. Yeah, you can decide you though, that's fine. Ooh, the call out. Uh no, stop that. Although this time he's not in range, but still stop that. Idiot! <laughs> Oh my god. He should have waited. That was so bad. Why would he jump there? Oops. Oh, that guy just scared me. Okay, so what can you done better here? Uh, you can just wait. That's really it. You can just wait. I like what you're doing, but you're getting too greedy. This is a sign you're getting too greedy. After everything, you're trying to do more things. Like, not necessarily is that always the best option. You have to recognize when you're, uh, how much um, knockback your move is going to do in a certain situation, and then respect it. Like, if it's too low of knockback, there's no need to follow up like that. What you could have done is just wait and did the back air thing I told you before in the other game, uh, where you do back air and then shield and see if he reacts. Because now, if uh, he was smart and he saw you overcommitting like this, the first initial instinct uh, a Captain Falcon should have is to um, F tilt you there or down tilt you, and then you're just dead at 60, just like that. Man, he could have grabbed you. What the hell is this? Oh, he's. What? Why would you go for that? I guess he thought he could like get you before even jumping away, but that's not how that works. Oh, you stopped. You stopped. Um, I don't know if you stopped because you didn't feel confident or if you stopped because the character just fell out. Yeah, you just stopped. If he goes for a knee here and not back here, I'm gonna kill him. Oh, he goes for nothing. What is this? This guy's just actually not good. You could have added more pressure, but that's fine. You're gonna jump, I know that for sure. But um what can you do here? 
I guess jump back away forward or is pretty that's a pretty good solid option in this situation. You did half of that. Actually aerial nurture me would have been a lot smarter, but still you did half of that. <laughs> that's fun. I hate that hitbox hit. That by you doesn't exist, I don't understand. Doing one is fine, doing two, and you let him record. Yeah. Uh, you probably could have just done one and then go to ledge and then uh, F tilt shield or back air shield. Or even back air dash back F tilt to see if he catches it, if he rolls. Wow. I mean, look, I'm, I'm not going to say anything, but you know why, why I paused here. <laughs> mm. He was going to land with an attack anyway. I think a dash back um, up smash would have been fine, or a dash back dash attack. That's a grab right there. Because uh, the only option he ever goes for is like dash in options or shield. The reason I said grab is because if you dash attack and he shield, then you're you're gonna take like damage. So anyway, uh, stop airing like that, man. Stop. Just land normally with an air dodge away or. Air dodge towards, or just uh, you could uh, stall yourself with a side B or land with a down air. Like, Nair is just super small, dude. It's, it's just too small of a move. It's only good for like edge guarding because it's, there's not a lot of lag, so you can uh, go for a little tiny deep edge guard with Nair and then just go back up. Oh, I would have grabbed there, but you know, it's fine. He, he's a uh, he got greedy. He's a little off fire for that. Nice grab. Um, I don't agree with it because if you back through, he's off stage. But now that you down through, he has a lot of stage to recover on, and now you have to guess a lot harder if whether or not he's gonna go to ledge or if he's gonna go to stage. <laughs> Nice smash attack. He caught on to his dash hat. Mm -hmm. Close enough. That's gonna hit right now. Actually, wait for you to air dodge at all. Did you have enough time for Alfie? Yeah, you had enough time for Alfie. You greedy son of a gun. You could have grabbed too. You could have uh, down thrown and went for the 50 50 side B mix up. It's 50-50 only. It's not a true combo ever. I'm saying it's a 50-50. Like, uh, on fast rollers, it probably works a lot better with F-Tilt because uh, side B is uh, a lot slower than F-Tilt in the beginning, if I recall. Let me check real quick. Uh, I'm looking at Falcon right now. Cloud. F-Tilt starts at frame 9, and side B starts frame 10. Okay, so yeah, F-Tilt's faster. It probably would be better. By one frame, but one frame means a lot in this game. Alright, uh, so let me tell you why. So, um, he reacted instead of just thought a little bit there. And then you proceeded to let your panic take over. And he was capitalizing for a lot of it. Yeah, no, because you were you were in a panic motion or er, mode. It's a lot harder for you to sustain 
relaxation, and because of that, it's a lot harder for you to actually uh, pay attention to the opponent and what he's going to do. See, uh, you're reacting because you think something uh, is going to happen right next after that. Uh, you're expecting him to keep hitting you and he's uh, just taking the full advantage. Oh, he tried to capitalize on that, but uh, good thing he should. Here you will grab and F throw him off stage, and then now uh, you can start by strapping. Hell yeah, let's go. He did exactly what I wanted to do. Uh, but you didn't even let's okay. Well, he did half of what, do, what I wanted you to do, but okay. it's progress. Uh, you should have definitely dashed away and then re-grab again and threw him back off stage. Oh, that was risky as hell, dude. Oh, oh, I would. I want him to F throw him. God damn it. You deserve this. You, you wasted your double jump. Come on, man. At least you got bullets. I Wow. Okay, I would have dashed that. You're crazy. Oh, he's dead. That was a um, what do you call it? That was not an aerial version. He's dead. If he did aerial version, it probably would have missed. So good shit there. You clutched it out. You regained back control. I really thought you were gonna lose. I mean, you should have. He should have F tilted you and then air started you. But you know, not everyone's aware of situations like that so still good shit good shit but uh be, be a lot more careful next time all right so here's game three i want to watch now uh, let's see here all right what was game three this work on it promise me you'll work on it uh, i would have back aired there personally uh back air is negative uh three on hit and if you do a full hop, it's actually negative two. And the reason for that is because a full hop actually does bonus damage versus a short hop, which always does a consistent damage. Um, usually the bonus damage is like around one to two to three percent, depending on the character. And it actually changes frame data. So a uh, full hop does a minus uh, one extra. So it's negative two actually. And I'm pretty sure you did a full hop. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. That was a full hop. Negative two. He could not punish you. You could have, um... What, what, what was he going to punish you? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. If, if you did uh, back air, he would have gotten hit by it. And if he shielded it, he would not get punished for it. So, definitely uh, work that with, um, put that in there into your gameplay. Back air is a lot really, uh, really good. Um, fair is still good on shield, it's just it's negative six, so it's not like as good, but back is still good. Uh, fair is still amazing. So yeah, definitely work work hard into getting the down pack natural. If you timed it better, you would have gotten it, but that was a lot better of a back air. Promise, that was a lot better of a back air. Okay, in that situation, I think you have something there. Um, actually, I don't. I have something following that up, but... Uh, that situation uh, goes back to the last game. He's dash dancing a lot. You could have dash attacked immediately. Because he's dash dancing in a situation, and, or in an area where he really can't afford to. If you dash attacked, he would have given you a lot more space in stage. He's going to start going more back, and he's going to start respecting you. If he doesn't, you keep on hitting him for it. Uh, yeah, so that's going to be Nothing happens. Good. He's not chasing you because that was not a favorable. No, don't do that. 
against a smart player, they'll catch on to that, and then they're gonna F-tilt you for it later, so just don't do that. Oh, All you have to do is just grab ledge. He wasn't gonna chase you. This was really risky. This is the one thing I want to touch on. Um, you have a bad habit of doing this kind of option at ledge. Instead, you know, Cloud has actually a, a lot of other options with jump from ledge. Not drop down jump, jump from ledge. Um, what you can do is uh, jump from ledge side B, and if it hits, you can get all five hits. Um, you can also drop down, uh, jump towards the stage, wall jump, neutral B towards the stage. It's risky, but not a lot of people will see that coming. And if you do get hit, it's because they were trying to attack you. Really, they didn't see that coming. But yeah, that's another thing you can do. Uh, another thing you can do is uh, drop down from ledge, jump towards the stage and air dodge. And if he's committing, he put himself in a bad situation. And you can capitalize. Uh, another thing you can do is roll. You don't really do that often. I mean, you used to in my only thought, but it doesn't seem like you like to roll from ledge that much anymore. So uh, don't, don't take that option away from you. It's just mix it up. Mix up all your different options that you have. That's how you keep yourself ambiguous. Either way, you got him, so it's not going to flame you for it too much, but it's still not a good option. Uh, you could have chased him with a, a jump side, or jump neutral B, because then a little blade beam is going to come passing to him, and you're also going forward with him. So once the blade beam hits him, or if he shields, you can just go for a grab. That was a full hop because that was out. Yeah. yeah, okay, so that was actually instant double jump. Okay, yeah, you can actually do that too. Instant double jump uh, down airs are actually really safe if you um, land it on shield. Depending on the character. But like against Falcon, it's actually not a bad option. Uh, your downer is negative 11, 12, yeah, that's fair. It's not amazing, but auto cancel is always nice. If you auto cancel, you only have like, what, I think it's like 3 frames of the M lag. So yeah, definitely learn time for that. I have no idea how that climbed, but it's smash. This, this is uh, too close for comfort. I would imagine he would hit you from here, but um, don't blade beam so close to the opponent like that. If anything, I would ra I much prefer you to use the cross slash, at least if he jumps, he'll get hit. But if he jumps and you blade beam, he's just going to go over it, which I'm pretty sure he's going to do. Yeah, that's good. Punch you in there. Um, another option you could have gone for is just like walk forward a little bit and see what he does, because then you can react to his next option. <laughs> That looks like he's turning around, but I would grab you. No, oh, I'll tell. You can up-B that. You can 100% up-B that. If you up-B that, um, you get 19% damage, I believe. So, you got it on. Yeah, it's really good. Uh, the reason you can up-B that is because it's negative 12 on shield. Uh, your up-B starts at frame 7. So, you, you are actually positive uh, for 5 frames. So, basically you have 12... Or, well, frames to work with right there. So, um, whenever you see him mess up with an up tilt, recognize that situation and up beat that. Just up beat it completely. Um, I see. I notice you're doing dab a lot. Um, just relax a little bit. I don't really think jab is ever a good situation to do when he's in the air. Because uh, I know if you're doing jab while he's in the air, it's because you're not actually paying attention to what he's doing, and more so you're just like trying to throw out buttons out of reaction. So just like relax a little bit, wait a little bit, see what he does. Because a lot of uh, getting better at this game is just slowing down how you used to play, and then paying more attention to what your opponent is doing. Also, one thing, if you look at your character, don't do that. Look at your opponent's character at all times. Never keep your eyes off your opponent's character because that lowers your reaction abilities. 
got away. That was lucky of you. If you did get that up air, you would no longer have a double jump and you would be in a really bad situation. Oh, that was a really good reaction. That was lucky. <laughs> you got him in the startup. If he was mid during that side B, you would have gotten armored. Oh, that's crazy. It still got him though. Thanks. Oh. I like that he did pressure him for a little bit, but I think you should also rise up the downer just to give him a little threat. Be like, oh shit, if he, uh, if he gets this downer, I'm dead, you know, right? So, you wanna do the same thing you did here, right? Uh, the moment you double jump, down air. Dude, the moment you double jump like this, do a down air as well. You threaten him. But, um, pay attention to where he likes to recover. Just wait a little bit. And the moment you feel like he's going to up B, you do the down or double jump thing, and he's probably going to get hit by either the, the strong hit, which will spike, or the weak hit, which will uh, knock him towards the stage, and you can't tech it because he's not going to react to it. Unless he's going to tech preemptively, in which case, you know, that's something top level players and high level players do all the time. But yeah, uh, it never hurts to do a downer. You should practice that on training mode. It's really good to have that on lock. Um, yeah, you keep giving him so much distance. Like, I'm glad you're charging up your limit and your win condition, but like, also pressure him. I also get those back ears down packed. You need to pass all those to actually get a lot of hits in. Cloud really works a lot better. He's like a lot stronger if you can get those fast fall aerial consistently now. Of course, you're gonna mix up, right? Like you're gonna do uh, fast fall aerials and mixing up with rising aerials. Of course, you can do that. And then there'll be times where you just like float a little bit in the air. You won't even fast fall, but like the moment you're about to hit the ground while you're floating in the air, you're just gonna back air like. You have like three ways of um, timing your aerial, and it'll still be a mix up in itself. Like, you can use a one move uh, as much as you like, as long as you're like constantly mixing up their timing. Like, you could do a fast fall back air, and then mix up with a rising back air, and then don't even fast fall, but like do a landing back air. You know, it's, it's like you're mixing up the timing non stop, and that makes it a lot harder for your opponent to get in. So, yeah, just keep that in mind. That was good. You didn't commit too much. Uh, once you hit him here, you can always dash in and try to get some pressure in. Okay, I'm back. Uh, sorry, a little intervention here. You won't notice it on your end, though. Okay, nice one. Alright, so this situation is really good. After this, you should chase because uh, the only option he's going to have is air dodge in or jump. And if he does nothing, you can always get a back air in. But if he jumps, you can also get a back air in, so you cover two options in one. Uh, yeah, chase the next time. It's really good to keep up the pressure. That's something you're going to need a lot with Cloud. Cloud is all based on pressure. This whole game plan is all about pressure. So just keep that in mind. Uh, you're going to get hit here because that was lagging. Like yeah, you're doing a lot of rising back airs with this guy. Ooh, that Falcon sucks. He should have air dodged. Uh, so a common option in high level, which a lot of low levels and mid-level players never know until like they fight a high level player, is uh, fast fall air dodging. Fast fall air dodging is when you're in disadvantage like Captain Falcon was, and instead of just falling and doing nothing, they will uh, get out of their free fall animation, and then fast fall and then air dodge at the same time. Like neutral air dodge, not like left or right air dodge, no directional air dodge, just neutral. Neutral air dodge is actually just godlike when landing. It's really hard to cover, and the only way you can cover it is by pretending you're gonna attack them as they air dodge to the ground and then cover it with a move that covers that option. So it's really just prediction at the most part. But yeah, yeah, 
you don't really need to worry about it now, but like if you understand the concept now, it's going to be a lot easier for you to like actually just keep people on the air, juggle them for a lot harder, keep them off stage because they're doing bad options. I can go over that with you in a later session if you want. It's just my, as you can tell, my voice here isn't really great. I need a better mic. So, yeah. Uh, nice down here. I would prefer to hit forwarder because if you land the uh, spike hitbox of forwarder, it combos right into side B. And that is an automatic 40%, I want to say. It's 23 plus like 16, so yeah, it's, it's very practically 40%. Spot dodge you can have it. I don't agree with that. You you probably didn't catch on to it, obviously, because you know, that's not something you're looking out for. But um, if you see your opponent likes to spot dodge up to getting hit, uh, wait a little bit and then side B, and you get a free 90% right there. That was that was completely baited. I don't blame you. He looked like he was gonna try to do something. Uh, up you go. I mean, that works too, but like, you're not gonna get... No, that's a lie. No, no that, that's actually fine. Uh, it's just, uh, sometimes you want to get as much percentage as possible while you're a stock ahead. And up you would do 19, whereas if you back through, it probably would pump will do like 13 to 15 damage. So there's like a 4 to 7 percent difference you could have had, but it's fine. Like, you have stage control and you're keeping the pressure on, so I, I, it's not a bad option. I'm just giving you another option for uh, percentage-wise. Uh, that down throw. That's never gonna combo. Keep that in mind. It will never combo. Even with like bad DI, it still won't combo. It's just not a good move. Down throw is actually just bad. Like I hate to say it, I hate to break it to you, but like in Smash Four, it was a really good move. But not even in this game, combo at all. Not even at zero. Maybe if you had limit cross slash at zero, but like. It's just trash, dude. It's such a bad move. They nerfed that so hard. Your option there would always be back there, by the way. Um, I agree with this a lot, actually. But, uh, he delayed his recovery, so good on him. Back there. Nice! Good shit, good shit. You're gonna dash back there. But, uh,. Um, whenever you have a backer like that, and you're really positive they're not going to do anything, um, just go for another back air, or and in this case, I will allow an air. It's like an air will keep them off stage more, so it's fine. And it's not that laggy. Nice. Nope. I like the idea, though. I like the idea, but um, no. I, I, don't, I didn't feel that one. But um, so, idea was it. You had an idea that you were going to keep them. So, I don't blame you, but um, and there when you do that, they're gonna panic more, so you might as well just like wait a little bit. You don't have to commit to anything, you just wait. Yeah. Nope, that was clearly baited. Whenever Cloud has limit, a lot of people tend to like make the most obvious baits now, like they don't want to get hit by it, so they're gonna try to be more ambiguous, but they're also their baits are also gonna be like really obvious. They're gonna jump a lot because they're gonna. Be, be afraid of uh, lit blade beam as an option and on the ground they're going to shield a lot more and this is why your character excels in pressure because once you have limit they have to be a lot more careful and you can be a lot more reckless in turn it's like joker whenever he has arsene a lot of people are just become a lot more careful they're like oh shit i'm scared but then the joker player can actually be more aggressive and neutral and because this is the case they can apply more pressure and make you more likely to mess up so yeah, keep that in mind. Bad from Falcon, but good for you. Um, so you clearly called that out, but you were not nowhere near the dash uh, range distance for it. Um, for that, you probably would have dash stacked. Um, moving on in this situation, I like this a lot. He has to shield if he can't. Nice. So now he's pressured. 
you can afford to walk a little bit and then down till because then you'll cross jump and you won't see it coming. But if he jumps, then which he likes to jump a lot, you could probably just go for like a backer. Oh, he dashed away. Why? Stop doing S smash. No, you're gonna get like grabbed or dash attack now. Oh, that's nice. Oh, okay, he got saved. You're giving him okay signals to just take stage. You need stage. You gotta make sure you're the one that's dominating the stage game here. Alright, very nice. Uh, here's where that um, run off, double jump down would come in handy. If you did it now, um, or a little bit beforehand, uh, he 100% he would have probably done the spike. You have limit, man. It's nothing to be afraid of. If you have limit, you can go for edge guards, dude. Like, 100%. Uh, I guess you were trying to guess jump from ledge. I don't think I seen him do that option that often. I think he prefers to get up a lot more. But still, you had the intention of covering something at least. Uh, dash attack on two lines. You didn't. Okay, that's fine. That's uh, more of um, situational awareness. Situation awareness. That's that's really all that comes down to it. So you had to. Um, be aware of what your options are and uh, experience it. Uh, he should grab here. He doesn't, weirdly enough. Oh, one thing, you'll see a lot of people that like to go for like jab on shield. You shouldn't worry about that at low level. It's not that good of an option because a lot of people when they do it at low levels don't really have a meaning for it. At high levels it's more of like your opponent is really pressured, and then jab is just a condition into the de uh, defensive option, and then they're going to attack it for it. I did cross slash, good shit. Oh, he got out of it. Probably SDI. Not on purpose. I mean, if you did it earlier, it probably would have hit. Actually, maybe not, because he was already committed to jump. But still, you had the attention there, so I won't give you like too much of a hassle here. Um, don't panic air dodge like that. Yeah, just like try to stall a little bit, confuse him, and then you can probably air dodge somewhere else. Oh, you got lucky. <laughs> That's a dash right there. Oh, you, you're, you suck, man. <laughs> that was a dash attack or a back air right there, dude. Oh, nice. Nice roll. I know it was a panic roll, but still a good roll. Uh, you have to wait a little bit. Uh, the reason why you wait is because you have to know where they're trying to land. You see where they're moving, and you're trying to punish where they're going to be. Not where they are. Oh, that back would have been so nice. Nice, nice. Oh, that was he, he did his recovery way too high. You 100% could have had that attack right there. But it's okay. Um, it's Again, like, it's, it's experience, situational awareness. And you don't have that right now. It's fine. You'll develop that as you go. You just have to play a lot. Oh, that's good. He only gets out there. Okay, then. I was caught last because oh my god. That's that's sad. That's unfortunate to see. That was probably a buffered um double tap up me. But uh it's okay, I understand. It happens to me sometimes. You just gotta like trust that you're up you will do your thing. But I would have been the cross slash in that situation because his upbeat can't go any farther than where he was. 
and he had to up me at that moment. But uh, either way, like I said before, it's just experience. You'll you'll get through that uh, once you play more. <laughs> I wasn't even confident I was going to get something out of that. I was going to dash away and see if I can get like a dash attack sometime soon. Mm, don't dash in, don't dash in. Oh, you didn't dash in. That a little uh, earlier, you would have died. That's crazy. But, uh, good shit. Uh, I prefer to chase. You chase and then you go to your limit afterwards. That, that downer 100% would have killed him. If you did the double jump downer, he would have been spiked right there. And like I'm only telling you because um, you're not you're not always gonna get the spike, but like when you do it, you have a chance of hitting him, and then you also have a, a better time pressuring him from the corner. Call me with those F smashes. That's how you start getting hit a lot more. You commit more, and they commit less, they hit you a lot more. Okay, so back throw, he's gonna go on a little angle. He might double jump up B, I doubt it, because he doesn't seem to be like the person to do that. So which could go for if he goes like a nail or a back air. Either way, he's probably dead. But you left the corner. You said you just lead us to the corner. You have to be really comfortable actually going for edge guards. The only way you're gonna do that is for actually going for edge guards. That's the only way you'll get better edge guarding. So really, just put yourself out there, even if it risks, uh, even if it costs your your stock, it doesn't matter. As long as you get the experience points and learn how to do it properly, that's all that matters. We'll bite you. Uh. uh I guess you weren't expecting it to do that? I don't know. Yeah, you keep running away from the corner. Like, I get it. You're scared. You get hit once, you're probably dead. But, like, you keep them in the corner, you keep them pressured, they're more likely to do bat more mistakes than you are. Yeah, that would have killed, actually. Back throw? Yeah. It's pressure, dude. The limit doesn't matter right now. You have the momentum, it's like actually playing. Oh, no, I know. Pressure, they're more likely to mess up. You're not though, because you're confident. That's that's the difference here. When you're confident, you make decisions a lot more consistently and better. Is that game three? Um, I guess I'll do two videos. Uh, I'll do this will be a full set, right? You three of them, and then we'll do another one. Okay, so. Going on to the next video, keep in mind you're doing solid. I don't think you're doing too bad. I think you're actually doing decently. There are some things you could be doing better, but you know, I, you're not doing the worst. For sure. You're, you're still learning, and you should be happy that you're gaining more experience. Alright, so let's see here. He gets a win on you finally? Or no? Wait. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He gets a win on you finally. Okay. So let's see why you lost. <laughs> Holy shit, you just said YOLO. 
finally a platform stage. <laughs> you were so confident with that option, holy shit. You were like hella expecting me. Nice, how much did you drop down? Uh, don't do aerials when you drop down when you don't have to. It, it's a waste of frames. If you do a drop down normally, you have a little bit more frame data to work with. Uh, I'm assuming you're doing up. Ah, uh, you, you were doing good there. You kind of lost off. Ooh, he's gonna F tilt you and then he's probably gonna jump down to try to chase you. Uh, in this situation, you're gonna tilt because neither neither both side both sides are no longer in a good position, and your tilt's gonna come out faster than his tilt is. That's a, that's a, actually a better option anyway. Good shit. Ooh, yeah. See, if you did the the fast roll back here properly, you would have caught him. He would have been off stage again. Oh, you gotta come in with that four air. You gotta time this properly. That was a call out, right? I don't see anything else. Down air, that was greedy. You didn't, have to, you didn't have to do that. You could have just waited for him to land on the platform. So, here's why. Uh, let me explain to you the concept of um, frame turn. Got him here, right? He um, he's probably not gonna expend his jump, but um, in this situation, what you can do instead is run underneath the platform and wait till he gets super close to landing, and then do an up air, because then you frame trap him, and if he uh does a, a tech situation, you still have enough frames to hit him again for something else. And that's really why you want to keep him on the platform. Like, if, you, if you're ever in a platform, you're in disadvantage. You're like, immediately, you're in a bad spot. Hardly any characters I can actually just get out of that quickly. And Falcon is not one of them. Um, yeah, just wait a little bit, go underneath the platform, and as soon as he lands, just uh, wait for his option up here, and you, you got advantage for free. And if you really wanted to, you can uh, make a read with down B if, if you think he's going to tech roll away like he usually does. Or you can also cover the most options by just like jumping and then doing a neutral B when he's uh, about to land. So, you know, there's a lot of things you can do with Limit in that situation. But upper is usually like the go to or back here too because it's that giant the hitbox for no reason. So, yeah, keep that in mind and um, apply that to your matches and you'll see a lot of significance. Of course, I'm not expecting you to like learn all this. In one day, this is going to take like weeks and weeks of non stop grinding. But like, you can do it. I'm pretty sure you're confident enough to do it. Just don't get cocky. Because, like, once you get cocky, you uh, let your controls take, uh, you, you let your emotions take control, and then you just play worse. Uh, I know that because I'm kind of, I'm that kind of person too. Like, I, I usually get um, very cocky when I start winning. But, like, once I started getting that under more control, I started noticing that uh, I played a lot better when I'm not cocky. And I started taking a lot more wins from actual local players. So yeah, just like, baseline, wait till they're uh, at the platform and pressure, and don't let your emotions control you just because you have a slight victory. <laughs> So you want to like actually try to aim those up threes more towards ledge. Don't be afraid of failing. Like failing is just part of growth. Even if you fail, you know for next time to do it in a different way. Yes. What else is there? Notable uh, double jump wasting right here. You didn't need to do that. He was nowhere near you. You could just like uh, go a little bit lower and then uh, double jump air dodge the ledge. <laughs> I can see that, because you double jump a lot, so he was trying to cover. That was really good. Ooh. 
I don't agree with that. You should up every view. See, the thing is, when you're in a platform, you can up air for free. Like, literally, there is no reason not to up air there. The only reason you don't up air there is because they're already running out of the situation and you need to cover where they're going to land. Or if they're double jumping. Either way, like, really good at shit there. Um, always up air pressure when the opponent is on the platform like that. Nice up tilt. Um, probably go all the way towards center and you should be fine. Any more than that, you're probably overcommitting. Uh, that was unnecessary. You need to, that, that's just a sign that you're not paying attention to your opponent's area. You really need to stop panicking. Like, I know you did an aerial, but you're not going to die because that was an air. And the air ends really fast, so you'll be fine. Just time your uppy better, so you, you don't have the potential to ever get hit. Okay, so he jumped this time. That means he might be jumping a lot more later. So keep that in mind. Um, you could probably upper him for doing jumping. They literally can't do anything once they're on a platform. If they're on a platform, they're fine, but like, if they're on a platform, take advantage of that. But if they're on a platform, most people are going to try to run off. They're never going to go like under the platform. And that's actually like how you mix up getting off of the platform, running off, jumping away, and then um, dropping through the ledge or through the platform. Okay, so I don't think you're gonna react with forward air here, but um, if you know the situation's gonna happen, forward air like that as well. Uh, I'm assuming you're gonna foul slash here. He's gonna die. Nice Okay, he's just running into you. You gain all the momentum, you no longer have the double jump, you should back. Nope, you got greedy. Up smash would never kill anyway. Like back air, just just back air in the situations. You had a chance to up air, but you went in for a nice tech. Um, whenever he up he panics, just wait a little bit. Don't do anything. Just wait, see where he lands up air. <laughs> That was really good, you waited finally. Uh, he should be safe. Nope. I thought he was gonna be safe. Maybe he has less, uh, invincibility for him there. But it's good you have momentum, so how did you lose it? You probably panicked somewhere and then he took over. Nice I mean, it was a stop. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, you should up your right eye. Ah, it's up. Oh, God. Oh, you're crazy. I 
you panic, you can't find a kill. Like, that, that's just how that works. When you're panicking and trying to force a kill, you can't find the kill. Uh, just note that, like, finding a kill comes by itself. Just be patient and play the game. Just, just play the game out. Don't, don't panic. Don't, don't feel like you need to make the first move when you have such a big lead like that. Just uh, play it carefully and calculate it. Yeah, that was really good. He waited me back here before. Unfortunate. But yeah, like, I'm not gonna blame you because I understand. You're you're panicking. You don't you don't have a sense of control. You're like, oh shit. Things are not going well. I get that. But uh, for next time, just, just don't panic. Just wait a little bit. Feel out the situation. You'll find more more, more likely than not that like, they're not actually threatening you with anything in a lot of situations. They're just being dumb. But yeah. I, still, I, I think you still did fine. It's just you panicked and then you just let things snowball. Alright, um... Let's see here. Game five, he won. Uh, you got complacent, more like cocky is the word there. But either way, it's more like you got just panicky. That's that's really what happened. He wins this one, man. Oh yeah, so you're saying he wins this and you resort back to habits? Yeah, that happens. Uh, not you're not all the time gonna be able to keep composure. Once you lose composure, you start going back to uh, autopilot mode, and that's usually because you're drained out already and you need a break a little bit. Um, usually, when I play someone in the set, I rather take a break for a little bit, like five minute break, get that mental, mental head, uh, head game. Like you need your mind to be on chip, uh, top shape. Uh, but uh, yeah, once you uh, start autopiloting, you you play a lot worse and you play a lot more uh, comfortable, which is what you don't want. Once you're comfortable, you start playing worse. You gotta be uncomfortable and be conscious. Um, so you lost in this one. You resort back to old habits. Uh, you win the shiny this one. Bad habit. Okay, so I'll watch this one since you lost in this one. <laughs> You wait a little bit, see where he's going, and punish his landing. Uh, that's, a that's a grab and a half. Okay, so uh, here's the thing. There's a mindset where people will, um, when they feel like they're, everything's going well for, him, for them, they start using a lot more attacks, and they start ignoring grab as an option. Uh, you don't want to be like one of those people. Whenever you're uh, pressuring your opponent hard, they are more likely to grab because your opponent feels like they don't have an option, and you want to make them feel like that constantly because they make poor and more poor decisions. So uh, it's important to have like a mix of, of dash attack and grab. If you have a mix of dash, and, dash attack and grab, you uh, you can make it so that um, whenever you dash attack him the first time, he's going to shield the next time, and then you grab him that time. And the following time, he's going to be like, oh shit, well he grabbed me for this, and he dashed time for this. So he's going to start guessing, and because he start, he's going to start guessing, his mentality is going to shift towards like, shit, I don't know what to do, I'm panicking. I'm scared, he's, whatever I do, he's going to attack me for it. So then he's going to start throwing a lot more worse options at you, and then you can just be patient and just slap him for it all the time. So that's usually how that goes, but, but yeah, you know. Um, just be, uh, be more alert in the situations. And uh, start throwing out more grabs so you can get more experience with grabs. Because uh, you learn attacking is good, but not all the time. Because uh, like like everything in fighting games, there's rock paper scissors. Um, rock is attack, paper is uh, shield, and scissors is what do you call it? Grab. 
So whenever they use scissors, you go for um, rock, right? And whenever they go for shield, you go for scissors. Or for, well, whenever they go for paper, you go for scissors. So, you know. Just uh, slow it down a little bit. Make the game of your pace. You don't have to keep going too fast. And, um, yeah, just in general. Don't, don't hold forward too much. Because uh, then you get constant holding in here. He should have grabbed me and backed on me because he's caught in the uh, off stage area suck my ass. Yeah, yeah, stuff like that is really unpredictable. Stuff like that is how you keep someone from big stuff. Good shit right there. I like that a lot. You probably didn't mean to do it on purpose because you probably got scared and then air dodge after you did the jump. But even then, I want more of that. That, that shit is good. They're not going to ever see it. <laughs> Yeah, he was dashing. He didn't have anything for the other. He could just wait. Whenever he's in these situations, right here, a lot of people, like a good 80% of low level, mid level, and even high level players, love to jump and hold forward. What you should do instead is jump, right? And then just land back down to the ground. Because a lot of people are going to be expecting you to land in front of them. But it'll throw them up if you land like five feet away from them. I guess this is kind of a little hard to say whether he should use Adder or Nair there, but I guess you can mix up is really the answer. If they go high, you hit him in there. Yeah, yeah you can just wait. You, you can just wait and see what they do. But uh, I like that you're going more offstage and doing a pretend fight. You should do that. Uh, right here, you should have finger advantage. You should go for a grab. He's probably going to be No, well, he's an aggressive person. Holy shit. Okay, so we know that he doesn't like to use shield that much. So I guess you could just counter that with like a dash attack whenever he uh, does a defensive option. Oh. That was a really good down tilt. If you just did it a little later, it would have worked out, but still really good. He likes to shield after he attacks a lot though, I noticed that. So whenever he attacks, you can feel free to like grab if you ever find this guy ever again. Oh, I see. Uh, this is why I recommend doing aerial versions because then when you do aerial versions, you can actually just back up a little bit more. And it'll mix uh, mix up the, his way of uh, hitting you. Are you against uh, this little dude here? So you got a Falcon, we're gonna go over here. Special attacks, negative 12. Yep, you can up B, you can up smash even, but uh, it's a lot harder because you have to perfectly time that, which is not that feasible online. So up B for sure. Or grab, you can back throw him afterward. I think up B is the best option because sometimes Raptor Boost pushes him away from the air shield. And the grab just misses, and since your cloud, your grab is really small, uh, I think up is just like the, the most optimal solution in that situation. Alright, let's get back to the video. Nope, nope, you deserve that. You deserve that. You need to be patient, 
and just wait. Wait up B when you need to. That was unnecessary. He was above you already, like, no by no. Yeah, you should up be in those distances all the time. That way, you're never going above the ledge and you just grab ledge. Uh, the only way they're going to hit you is by two framing or going up so they hit you with a really easy to time aerial, which not a lot of characters have, but something like Palatina does with the air. So, yeah, just keep in mind that. Um, always going low is a good option with Cloud. Like, don't be afraid to go low. You're not going to die if you do it. And if you do, you learn. It's part of the process. It's alright. <laughs> Okay, so I've noticed that whenever he does the double up air, he lands and does another one. So, uh, it's just minor things you won't see in an actual match until you start being well aware of everything your opponent does. But uh, in, in this situation, you can always up air. But you have to call it out first. <laughs> I know I told you chase in those situations, but like this is too low a percent, you could just wait. Ooh, and I See, a lot of people uh, a lot of people have this thing where they start playing a lot better and more careful when they're at uh, last stock high percent. Um, you want to make that actually just second nature to every single match. You want to play like that all the time. That's how, that's that's uh, usually when you're playing at your last stock high percent is when you're playing your best, like what you actually can do. And uh, you should always watch your videos and see what you're doing differently at uh, last stock high percent versus when you're uh, um, at, at three stocks and have no lead. Like that's that's gonna show you what you're doing better versus what you're doing worse. <laughs> Yeah, you, you really need to get those factors in control. I don't know how to hit you, probably because you have your arm out. Oh, I mean, you could have limit and then upbeat, but you know, that's fine. You didn't probably see it, which is just lack of character awareness, but that's fine. So yeah, I think that's all I'm going to do because that's probably pretty much what's going to be happening a lot. So yeah. You were doing fine. You probably could have done... Uh, you, you could... Uh, what am I talking about? You, you could have done a lot of things better. And I think uh, the really big things you really need to like work on is timing your arrows properly. Making sure you know how to fastball them at second nature. And... Um, Probably, it's just a lot of lack of fundamentals is really it, so just play a lot more, play a lot more matches, get that EXP going down, and uh, we'll play in a little bit, um, whenever you're free, I guess, and uh, I can probably see uh, what, what else you can work on, that's really uh, why you're losing a lot, but yeah, you're, you're doing fine, you're progressing fine, keep it up. Um, just uh, don't ever be cocky and have fun, most importantly. <laughs>